guaranteed universal income. Explain what that is. Yeah, so it's a very old idea. Um, the idea is that as every- old as Sir Thomas More, I have read. Yeah, no, it goes back even before uh, the, the founding of the country. Uh, so it's an idea where every citizen of a society gets a certain amount of money or resources free and clear to do whatever you want to meet your basic Regardless needs. of your income. Regardless of your income. So Thomas Paine called it the citizen's dividend and was forward at the founding of the country. Uh, Martin Luther King called it a guaranteed minimum income in the 60s. Uh, Milton Friedman called it a negative income tax and had the support of a thousand economists uh, in the 70s. And it even Richard Nixon seriously considered it. Yeah, it passed and it was the debated House of in Congress. No. Debated it passed in Congress. the House of Representatives twice in 1971 under Nixon. Uh, and one state has actually passed something virtually identical, which is the petroleum dividend of Alaska. Alaska. Where everyone in that state gets between one and $2,000 a year, no questions asked. Doesn't matter, you're working, not working, income doesn't matter. Um, and in Alaska, it has created thousands of jobs, it's improved children's health, it's decreased income inequality, and it's wildly popular in a very conservative state. Hi everyone, it's me, Demetra Kay, and I am sitting here with Donovan. His heart don't pump no Kool-Aid Sadiq. And this is the second edition of, yes, give me my coffee, because yours is just like black and yes, strong. strong. I mean, I like it black and strong mm -hmm. too, but not that black and strong. <laughs> so anyway, this is the second edition of Don't Believe the Hype, where we ask you to go beneath the service to see uh, and discover things for yourself. Uh, go past the memes and the talking points and all that other stuff. And so we are here to give you the facts as we know them, okay? We try not to, I mean, we offer our pain a little bit, but we try to have it go from a factual basis as much as possible. Like, what are facts, right? Alternative yeah. facts? Alternative facts. Okay, whatever. So anyway, <laughs> in this edition, and uh, hello to you guys on uh, Facebook. We are actually on Donovan's Facebook today. Um, we are going to get into it and talk about Mr. Andrew Yang. I want to call him Andrew Young for some yeah. reason, but Andrew Yang. Yeah. He is running for uh, president on the Democrat ticket. In 2020, he is an Asian American, Taiwanese to be exact. He is 44 years old. Uh, he grew up in Schenectady, New York. Mm -hmm. He is an entrepreneur um, and his, has a company called Venture for America. It is a startup company for uh, young people and people coming out of college to uh, help them start up their entrepreneurial um, adventures or whatever the case is. And so that's what he does. Um, it seems like it's pretty successful. He also uh, worked for the Obama administration. Hmm. And, um, and he did some, I oh, guess yeah, this did. thing That's was right. per, uh, kind of like um, bur, uh, born out of what he did for the admin, uh, Obama mm -hmm. administration. In 2011, this company came up. And so he has like 76 uh, policies so far, he says, because there's more okay. uh, uh, that he wants to enact um, if he's president. Now, as of today, he just qualified to be on the Democratic um, debate stage, stage, debate mm -hmm. stage in June. So he, as of t not like a couple hours ago, he's done that. And he said last month, in a matter of, I think, two weeks or something like that, I could be wrong, mm -hmm. but they raised $600,000. Um, and he is the first Asian American to run right. for president of the United States. Okay, so what are some of the things that he wants to do? Now, the major thing, and I'll just get to this one up front. So, no, he's not necessarily for reparations. Go ahead and clutch your pearls. He's not for reparations necessarily, but he's not against it either. However, one of the biggest things that he has, uh oh, look at his comments. I said, I said. One of the biggest things that he has is called UBI, Universal Basic Income. So, you ask me, what mm -hmm. is that, right? Universal Basic Income is also called like a freedom, uh, what is it called? A freedom dividend, in that every American 18 and over will get um, $1,000 a month tax-free to do whatever they want to do with it. I, I'm scared to even know what they yeah. said. But uh, me, well, my friend John says, uh, uh, this is better. She is better looking than you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, so basically, every American will get $1,000 to do what they want with it. It's tax-free. Um, and he, his argument is that a lot of people need that money, not necessarily to go um, just blow it, Mm -hmm. But to survive, because he says, which is true, 78% of Americans are living check to check. What would $1,000 do for them? Mm -hmm. That would give them a cushion. Also, 59% of Americans can't afford a $500 emergency. So if something came up, they needed some new tires or a roof was leaking, it cost $500. 59% right. uh, of Americans cannot afford to take care of that without perhaps going into uh, debt as far as getting loans and things like that. Wow. 
So the thousand dollars would alleviate that. Um, we talked about this a little bit on the show Sunday, mm -hmm. but I see it um in other way too. Is as far as like there's a lot of people. Let's say stay at home moms. There's not a lot of stay at home moms like there used to be, because mm -hmm. a lot of them are probably out there making part time a thousand dollars a month. So imagine if they were to have that thousand dollars, they could stay home. What happens when moms stay home with the kids? Mm -hmm. The kids are better, better off. off. They're yeah. smarter. They feel Socialized, more secure. They right. all that. So. I mean, there's a whole host of things this thousand dollars would do. I know for me, it would allow me to be, you know, have a little bit of um, uh, financial freedom and be stress free mm -hmm. of some of the things that I, you know, I have going on. Now, he also believes in a trickle up economy. Okay. And that if you give this thousand dollars to people, you know, there's a lot of people need it, then the money will trickle up because it will go back into the economy. I mean, a lot of people. They might, well, they might save it, but a lot of people are going to spend it. Right. Not right. necessarily on Jordans or things like that. They might spend it to help, you know, pay off some debt. Or they might, hey, listen, we haven't, as a family, been to Disneyland in 10 years. Now we can go to Disneyland and do some of the fun stuff. So mm -hmm. the, the um, he believes in the trickle-up economy. Like we've been hearing, we talked about last time, the trickle-down economy, mm -hmm. where the wealthy are supposed to make all this money and it's supposed to trickle down to the poor. Well, how long have we been waiting on that? About Ever. 40, 60 years. Yeah. Right. So his is a trickle up economy. All right. And feel free to jump yeah, in if uh, you have any but, questions. But, uh, sure. Doesn't Kamala have something similar to that? Yes, she hers is five hundred dollars. I like a thousand bumps. better. Yeah, okay. all that other nonsense mm -hmm. she got. She's well, she's just now for reparations, but at first she wasn't for reparations. Well, she isn't really. She's just saying. Right. That. That's what I'm yeah. saying. But she's I'm saying, saying, you know, now she's kind of like, okay, sounds good. Whatever's going to get me on a ticket, yeah. right? Because once they get in the office, oh well, I didn't get around to. Right. Sorry. Okay. And so, uh, what else do we have here now? The, I just, you know, took some of his talking points. Mm -hmm. This is, this to me, not to me personally, but to a lot of people, this is huge. He wants to pay NCAA athletes, a you know, a, a stipend. Mm -hmm. Because to his point, he says, you know, not necessarily in regards to the um, freedom dividend, but a lot of those uh, athletes are starving. You know, and then he says they have their likenesses everywhere on video games and, you know, Nike. Everybody's just making money off of these uh, now, Wait kids. a minute, though. But, but aren't they there getting a free education based on their scholarship? Uh, yeah, but, I mean, come on now. It, it, they're traveling. and may, I mean, the coaches are making someone worth upwards Millions. of a million dollars. To, Way more than that. And these kids, dollars. you know, God forbid somebody buys a free, them a dinner, they're in trouble. Yeah, you're getting a free education. I need to eat, too. And so you think about it, too, just like for the NCAA thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of these kids do come from underprivileged neighborhoods. And so... Once again, exploited children. Right. And, and, and if you guys have been following the news today, you um, saw that a story broke um, where 50 people have been charged and a lot of them have been arrested, some of them being movie stars, because they were bribing these high-end universities, USC, UCLA, Yale, and a couple other mm -hmm. ones. Um, to get their kids in the school, um, having them get around the SAT, just a whole bunch of nonsense, just to, you know, cheat to get their kids in. Is, and is the, that new? It's not new, <laughs> but these people are like busted, busted, right? right? And so the NCAA is also implemented in that. So then you have, here you got one end of the scale, you have wealthy people cheating to get their kids in. Mm -hmm. But then when Ray Ray, who is very talented at, let's say, basketball, right. gets in and some... One of those people come to him and say, hey, man, you know, if you promise to come here, whatever, you know, we're going to give you some money. Mama's at home, mm -hmm. probably working two or three jobs. You got your little siblings. They eating top ramen every night. Whatever that, whoever's yeah. giving you something, how am I going to say no? Or that booster comes here. That booster, right. Mm -hmm. So if I'm getting paid, then I can be a little bit more honest and operate in a little bit more integrity. If I'm getting, a, you know, a stipend or paid. I mean, hell, Nike is making how much off of these kids? Millions. Millions. I mean, we saw in the um, playoffs that the guy she was just shoe apart. busted, and Nike's worried because now they might lose money or may lose him because maybe he's going to get picked up by another shoe well, company. Well, the thing is, the, the kid's career might be over depending on the break that he suffered. But he's not making any money. He's like President Obama, if that means anything to you guys. He's sitting at the game. This is how big the game mm -hmm. was, and the kid who was the star is not making a dime. Right. So he's wanting to pay, he being Andrew Yang, wants to pay the athletes that uh, are operating under the NCAA system. Okay, another thing, this is huge, he wants to get rid of student loans. because he's, So free education. Free education to get rid of student loans because he talked about as of recently, 
Um, he had a hundred thousand dollars in debt just for law school, and he said he made a joke saying, "Let me go ahead and uh, pay my mistress this month, Sally Mae, because he said I never met her, right. but I'm giving her money every yeah, month." Right. For just to go get an education so he wants to get rid of student loans mm -hmm. he also and this is hey this is or will resonate with a lot of people get rid of robocalls yeah, they've been trying to do that and they seem to and find that's a what way he around said. it and that's what he said he says at first you know so whatever but he says but don't call us remember that yeah it doesn't work mm -hmm. i mean my phone's rang like four or five right. times and each time i looked at the number i'm like that's a robocall right well mine, mine just rang and it was mom sorry mom i'm on the air that's because of that, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that comment you yeah, made about the uh, failed, baby boomers yeah the, the failed uh, right thing. and so and then whenever you have some comments just go ahead and yeah. jump in mm -hmm. all right and so then he wants to also revamp the social security system as you know a lot of people who are elders um uh, to his point, which is true, I worked at Walmart twenty something years ago. Uncle Dudley, mm -hmm. um, where you saw who did you see as people breeders? The older, older people. people right? He says we need to get away from the system of seeing our older people working at convenience stores just to supplement their income. He says mm -hmm. they paid their, if you will, debt to society. Most of them have work, but they can't afford to just live. Like when I get seventy, I don't want to be like, oh, wait, let me drink my morning coffee. Go down to 7 Eleven. Wait, don't you do that already? <laughs> I sound like a man in the morning. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just saying, yeah. I might sound like a dude in the morning, but the point that I'm making is he's right. like, let's let's change this. Okay. You know, he says it's also a myth that old oh, Social Security is gonna be bankrupt or we don't that's have the myth, money. Right. He says we have the money, it's just that's what they they put out there to get everybody scared to death. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we get to keep raising the Social Security or the retirement age. age to death. You know, do you want to work until you're 70 something? Most people, you've been they conditioned to no do choice. it. They have no choice. Yeah, you've been conditioned to do it. Right. So, stop buying the Mercedes. Stop buying what you can't oh, afford. No, I need my Mercedes now. Right. You know, you got to stop doing that. Right. Live within your means. Another thing he wants to do is put a psychologist in the White House. <laughs> It's funny, yeah, it's but if you listen to his reasoning, he said he wants to put a psychologist in the White House because those people are at the helm of making very big decisions. And we know with, you know, uh, President Trump, he ain't all the way there. No, no, I, I, I'm the best negotiator. I'm the best. Nobody okay. can, uh, Korea, you can have everything you want. What do we got out of it? Nothing. Dr. Phil says that's a lie. Okay. <laughs> so if you had a psychologist in the White House... He said, that he, he said, and it would be mandatory for everybody okay. who's in, in the, the decision-making process in the White House, mandatory for them to talk to the psychologist whether they want to or not. Okay. Because I need to make sure you're right. He says the psychologist will also report out, okay, you know, Senator but, such and such is but, struggling with some things but, right now. But, okay, I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with that. Because okay. don't we have people that are put in the White House that become politicized. You've got people, this man is in the White House right now doing crimes, and people know he's doing the crimes, and yet they're there to be stopgap measured people. Right. They're not reporting anything, they're keeping silent, they're covering for him. So if you put a psychologist in there, what, what difference would it make? Well, because guess what? You're my psychologist. You're gonna do yeah, but I, I think we're, and I'm not for sure, so don't call me. His standpoint would I'll be obviously he, they're not connected. Now, eventually, we know they get it, connected. It all connected. But to it's me, it makes sense because, I mean, doesn't the president have to have an annual checkup? He does. So why not have a mental checkup? And remember that guy? Oh, the president, he, he's, so, he's so orange that it's going to be great. The orange in his skin is going to make him live longer. And, uh, is that what he said? Yeah. The guy, was, the guy was saying some, some crazy stuff. Is it orange, like really orange, like vitamin C, or is it like... Deficient or something. I, don't, I, I have no idea, but what I'm saying is... This is like that picture I sent you of the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, all these people are, that are already sitting there to stop gap. I mean, you have the people that are there to do that, to give them wise counsel, to do all these things, and yet they see this man doing crimes uh, you know and what? do nothing I about honestly it. don't have a problem with the psychologist okay. thing. I think there should be somebody in there to do some mental checks and balances because we know there's a lot of sick people okay, in the house. Okay, hypothetically. Okay. Let, or everywhere around. Let's say that uh, the president is sick. We do have an amendment that could remove the president right. based on uh, the 25th or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever it was to do that. He feels that the president is cuckoo. Now what? Then. How do you remove him? Well, I mean, I, I don't know that part of it, but I would imagine if it was me. You take the findings to whoever can remove them. Was it Congress? Congress. Was they can the remove them. Okay, this dude is talking about but some real weird stuff wait, up in here. I'm the, the Senate. Trump is crazy. 
Even if they impeach him now, Democrat, he's not going to go anywhere. So well, what point is it going to be? Well, who knows? I mean, maybe he has some measures in place that will do that. Because yeah. I agree, there's yeah. a lot of people who just say stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you ever watch this dude, I mean, he's like, you're not going to get you with him like a got you thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So the psychologist in the White yeah. House. Okay. All right. Another thing he wants to do, is he wants to promote vocational uh, schools over college. Because there is this, well, think about it. Now, think about it now. Think about it. How many people have college degrees and are not working in that field? I agree with that. How about putting wait, 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 vocational wait. back into high school? Okay, right. He talks about that too because he says 6% of, um, what do you say, 6% of American students. Where's my other notes? I wrote it down because I want to get this right. 6% of American. Look, at, I took a whole bunch mm -hmm. of notes when I was listening. Um... I guess they have, they, they can get vocational training, but overseas is over 50%. Mm -hmm. We know when we were coming up, we had a whole lot of vocational stuff we can do. I mean, it was home ec, there was wood shop, there was auto, there was mm -hmm. welding. There's a whole host of things, and they don't have those things anymore. Right. And so, and, and, and I get it because I listen to you a lot. I mean, Donovan, you built your whole house damn near by yourself. Right. Rebuilt it. From the ground. I mean, like, literally, Donovan has built his house from the ground up. And you Upgrading. often, Upgrading. well, I mean, yeah. roofing and all that, mm -hmm. side paneling. I mean, yeah, who does I, that? You ripped mm -hmm. out the kitchen. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, you, you did a little bit more than to put some nails in the shit, okay? I did. But you often lament how men and boys don't even know how to do that stuff anymore. Like, where did you learn to do it from? I mean, I know you spent a lot of time yeah, in the military, military, yeah, the military but I'm sure lot, you do a lot of that. Right. kicked a lot of ass right. to say be a man. Did you get some of that from school? I did. Right. I so did. here we have a lot of people... I mean, it talks about this too. Um, uh, Carter G. Woodson in the uh, Miseducation of Negro talked about how, especially in our community, we go off and get these big time stellar degrees mm -hmm. and psychology and philosophy, but it's like we can't come back and use that. However, we still have people who need their houses clean, the laundry done, the cars fixed, their uh, masonry. They, so we need those things, but people, people being the kids that are uh, seeking education, are getting that those that um, that knowledge. Right. And so there's a lot of people, me being one of them, who I have two degrees, but there's a lot of vocational stuff I have been trained to do because, mm -hmm. you know, I just need, I, like, I'm one of those people like multiple streams of income, so I use my degrees for that, um, like, what do you call it, uh, intellectual mm -hmm. pay, but then I can do some other stuff too, trust me, that's legal. Yeah, legal, but, <laughs> I'm about to go ahead. So, so. I, I like the whole vocational thing. Sure. You know, we, we like need I said, that. put it back in, put it back in, in, in into the school. I mean, how school. is it that people who are uh, electricians are making two and sometimes three times more than a person with a degree? Uh, a plumber. How much do they make? They just showing up to your house here in California. A plumber. That's a seventy-five dollar bill just for him to ring right. your doorbell. Exactly. And so mm -hmm. there's people with degrees ain't making that in a day. Some places and because they, won't. they right and, and they won't. And the sad thing we talk about this all the time. You know, our nephews, our nieces, whatever. Like, they sit and play PlayStation all day, and they can't do anything. They have a degree, but they have no skills. Or what about if you play in the PlayStation, it breaks down, and you know how to fix it? Right. You know, they don't need right. I, Mommy, I need another one. Yeah, because you saw the computers I have in the room that I tore apart. Yeah. I still have Windows 98, XP, Windows 7. I mean, I keep all the systems. So you mean you just throw away and go get a new one? Because I have games on those, so I, I have to keep you that system. You have games, and you got game because right. you know how to fix, fix those right. things, you know? Okay, so vocational, and I, that's you know, I kind of like what this guy's yeah, but so he's far. not saying don't go to college, but he's yeah. like, come on, there's things we still need. Okay, so let me know if we have some comments. Yeah, we need to remember that and this is from uh Shante. We need to remember that everyone isn't built for college, we need plumbers, electricians, we need people to get into trade vocations. And you know, and I'm glad uh, Tay said that because she had a, a new couch delivered. The only thing Tay needed me to do was help her uh, get it up the stairs, right. Because once we got there, she had her toolbox and stuff, and she was ready to go, you know? I mean, I, I stayed in the health whenever yeah, I Yeah, but I mean, so people need them. That's just a fact. We need mm -hmm. those things. I mean, there's a lot of jobs that you can't get with a degree. Right. But can you wire, fix, nail, glue? Uh, what about this engine? Or can you mm -hmm. do any of that? No, but I have a yeah. master's in public yeah, relations. Yeah, I mean, how many of you guys get, get tired of, uh, you know, you might be keeping up your yard and your stuff, but you look to the left of you, and you look to the right of you, your neighbors, it looks like hell in a handbasket. Because, for one, 
that ain't who they raise. When I say that's not who they raise, you got a lot of men out there with sons. And this is, mm -hmm. kind of, shut up, D. But mm -hmm. let me continue my point. You got a lot of men out there with sons who won't teach their sons. And yes, I said sons because I know somebody will say, oh, that's sexist. How to mow the grass, mm -hmm. how to take care of it. And I tell you, at 47, almost 48 years old, every two weeks, I'm going to take from the military spending. I mean, you're a military guy. Mm -hmm. You know damn well we don't need all the money they're allocating toward the military. Yeah. Uh, a, a good third of the military budget that's given every year is go, it goes to R and D, which is research and development. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're basically giving money to the Boeing manufacturers and Lockheed and all these manufacturers to research and develop things that might not work. Right, might not work. Right, They're, you know, you're, you're basically paying them to come up with something so they can charge us to buy it from them. Right, but you have people who are struggling every day, and that's just listen. That's just a fact. The way we're going now with 99% versus the 1%, mm -hmm. they, they just keep getting richer. They keep enacting laws and taxes, all kind of stuff, to continue putting more money in their pocket. And we're going to get back to the, um, what do you call it, um, the Communist Manifesto. Mm -hmm. uh, with, um, uh, Karl to... Marx and yep. Fred Ingalls, they, they, they talked about it. Eventually, we're going to get to the point where we have the uber-rich and the poor. There's not even really a middle class anymore. Well, let's look at the French Revolution. What was that about? Same thing. Right. So we're there Same already. Thing. So eventually, do, do we want to fix it now or do we want to have virtual mayhem in the streets because people are like, I'm tired of starving. You have all the money and stuff on this side. I'm coming to get it. Because we're going to get to that point. 5% mm -hmm. of all the wealth is uh, controlled by, 5% uh, of the wealth in the United States is controlled by this small group of uh, families. Walmart. Yeah. You know, that heirs yeah. got all the mm -hmm. damn money, but you know, you go in there. I, listen, I'll tell you guys a true story about Walmart. I could tell, tell you guys, I worked there about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And there's a, and I actually helped start a Walmart, when, you know, mm -hmm. when they first build them, mm -hmm. put everything in there. So I was working with a lady there. I went there the other day. She's still there? She's still there. Do you know how much money this lady making? How much? Just take a guess. Uh, $18. $14.25. Oh, wow. And she's been there. That store opened up in 1993. Okay. She's making $14.25 an hour. And she told me, and guess how much raise I just got after Ten five cents. years? 29 cents. Wow. And she had that big thing that says, you know, 25 or 30, like name plate. I, that ain't going to pay plate. no light bill for me. You know, but, but the point that I'm making is so she's... I mean, she's just getting drops in the bucket of a raise all these t all these years. While the executives get big, uh, what the the Walton family they said they got seventeen billion dollars in um, compensation. I mean, they don't. They... Walmart, whether a lot of people realize it or not, are the biggest one of the biggest benefactor. No, one of the biggest benefactors of retail of welfare. Mm -hmm. Most yes. of their employees yes, cannot qualify. afford. Right. To, to live food just stamps. on what they get paid. Yeah, they get food stamps, Medi-Cal, in some cases, cash aid. And, some of, and a lot of them are full-time employees. Right, which she is. Right. So, and I asked her, so do you, well, gosh, because she's a lot older mm -hmm. than me. So are you going to retire? She says, I can't. Mm -hmm. Me and her husband, who was a manager mm -hmm. um, of a Walmart, too, they, we just bought a house. It's $330,000, but we can't afford to retire. And a lot of people don't know this. Walmart puts insurance on their employees and the employees' loved ones in a chance that, like some of them are, with their lifestyles, that, yeah. that are smoking and sick, and they make money off of that as well. It's a hustle. Well, it's not a hustle, it's, it's well, macabre. They, they, but it is macabre, it's macabre, but it is called key, key employer, key people, key person insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of those people aren't the key people necessarily, like a manager or something, but mm -hmm. yeah, why not? Shantae says, woohoo, fourteen twenty-five, and then she right. says, Walmart and Disneyland. Right, so you're right. These people making all this money, but you got the employees. So imagine what a thousand dollars would do. My friend, for example, who works at Walmart and can't retire. I mean, you do the math on fourteen twenty-five an hour. I mean, I'm sure that's that's probably what two thousand a month after taxes, give or take. Yeah, maybe. Hell, that's maybe her mortgage, a part of her mortgage payment. Maybe she, her she could come home finally. Yeah, but you got to remember that's not the game. We have we have to make classes and keep people at the bottom, I get which it. is the black people. And, oh, um, and, you know, yeah, black people and poor people, which that's a lot of us. us. right. So another thing that he wants to do, now a lot of people are like, oh, malls. So what? Malls. We have a lot of ghost malls. Ghost malls, man. Yeah, I mean, do you have, like, go to San Bernardino. Go to uh, Moreno Valley. Moreno Valley is mm -hmm. ghost malls. Not, not maybe necessarily like the big malls, but there are some, you walk into a mall if it's not Christmas time, mm -hmm. it's like, Crickets in there, and so and then a lot of these other like little what do you call those malls? The outlet, uh, malls. The outlet malls and the little ones that you kind of have around the corner. Mm -hmm. A lot of those, 
They're ghost towns, and so he has an initiative that will give funding to entrepreneurs who have something creative to do with it, maybe make it into a, um, some sort of a living situation for someone, or he says a lot of them, which you got two of them over there, churches. A lot of these people are just building churches and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So he says we have funding for people who want to do something and churches creative. churches don't pay taxes, which kind of help, hurts the community. Right, so, well, and not, not everybody wants to open a church, but just because right. he said that's what they're doing now. You see a but lot in of poor churches. neighborhoods, there's a lot of churches. Right, in poor well, that's what people do, because people... And when you're poor, you need something to believe in, and you're going to believe in Jesus, and you believe if I sow a seed of faith, then I'm going to get some, you know, Right, while right. the pastor rides around right. that classic car. I mean, the, the, the mall, of, the, the strip mall is what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Up the street from your house, there's two churches next door right to each other. each other. Like, mm -hmm. they don't even need a band they can just share, because but you can hear, won't. I mean, I'm saying you can hear it through the walls, mm -hmm. you know. But, so, he says, because when you have these ghost malls, mm -hmm. it spreads blight. To yes. the neighborhoods and the, the property values and it stuff go down. And strike, and so right. So if you spur the economy that way and give those uh, entities something to do, then that also it helps the economy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for you guys that are listening, real quick, uh, quick announcement: Do not follow this guy Andrew Yang because he is talking some good <laughs> stuff. Uh, we don't want that to be uh, uh, out there. It makes sense. It's giving you guys hope. Do not look up Andrew Yang. Well, please. and you know, and again, I, I just want to say this again. He's not for reparations per se, but he is very cognizant. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know what? How close we are to getting reparations? Are we going to get reparations no. this time around? Uh, no. I, I don't want to say no, but I ain't going to say yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shante says someone wanted to turn abandoned malls into homeless shelters. Yeah. Yeah, so he was saying stuff like that. So whoever, mm -hmm. he said there's funding for people who have creative ideas to mm -hmm. do that with. Can you imagine... Okay, with all of the, the uh, strip malls that are vacant, if we made those homeless shelters... Okay, I have one question for, for both of you guys. Okay. Okay, he wants to, you know, and that's a good idea, turn it into homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. Fine, whatever, liability, whatever. Isn't it crazy? Remember a few years ago when the uh, housing market went down and the banks were bulldozing brand new homes rather than upkeeping right. them or donating them or, you know, uh, to homeless families right. or whatever? I mean, why do we let the banks do that, but yet the tax burden falls on us because when you help poor people they might become rich ah, and right. then you don't have that dependency on you right. just you know to joe's point the, hand up. yeah the welfare system is just that it's, it's crack for people for lack of better mm -hmm. words we keep you dependent we don't ever want you to believe you can too because there's like especially for the democratic party is it's it's um it, it's helpful for them to hand out welfare mm -hmm. because we'll always have By a voter. Your loyalty. Yeah. By your loyalty. Well, By and your then loyalty. you know the Republicans—they don't want you to have this. They don't want you to have that. And so it's like, gosh, you know, the, the, we hear we heard this a lot. I've even spewed when I wasn't as awake as I am mm -hmm. now. The Democratic Party is for the people. They it's help not. people, but yeah. if you really take a moment to think about it, do they really help people, or are they keeping people lullaby? And they only help certain people, like your your Uncle Tom Claiborne and people like that. I mean, it's just only certain people. Uh, Auntie Maxine, how are you a public uh, worker and you're a millionaire? How how does that happen? Well, we know how that happened. You know, but um, you know, but she had those. If she had to depend on those uh, democracy dollars. That wouldn't that it wouldn't, it, wouldn't be happening. It wouldn't be happening. And it would actually lobbying. do the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, what else do I have here? So, so that Andrew I mean, Yang, huh? yeah. So there's a lot of talking. Is, is points there a with, website where we can? Um, I'm sure it's probably Andrew well, Yang 2020. You know, Google something. Andrew Yang 2020 or Andrew. There's a Yang whole itself. host of stuff on YouTube. And listen, I'm not trying to tell you who to vote for, right. but somebody um, took us to task. You guys don't talk about other people. Like, okay, well, we're gonna start talking about you. Talk yes. about Tulsi Gabbard. Talk about mm -hmm. Andrew Yang. Which I'll be honest with you guys, I like Andrew Yang. I like what he's talking about. I'm going to research him. I, yeah. I, I, I mean, there are some ideas in there that I noticed that Kamala tried to jump on, and, uh, and she tries to steal that, her and Corey. Uh, but um, this and, is where we're going now. People right. are just at a point to where the old way of, of doing things is not working. We need something new. You know? Right. And uh, Shantae says, uh, Dems are only for poor black people. It's the continuation of a caste system in America. Exactly. That's, not, that's exactly. all it is. So there I mean, has to be somebody right. at the bottom, and it's going to be us. God forbid I really empower you. Because, yes. you know, we were told welfare is to empower you, is to help you, give you a leg up. I mean, how am I going to get a leg up if you give me, what is welfare? Now, I don't know, $500? Well, well, what, how, what can I do with well, that? Well, well, the thing is, what happened to saying, okay, if, okay, let, let, let's say this is the start of welfare back mm -hmm. in the 60s. Okay, we're going to give you guys welfare, but you only get it for the first five years. After that, you're on your own. I Wouldn't mean, that incentivize you to say, okay, I've got to get better 
and you know, and after that, you're done. Well, from what I understand too, with welfare, you're supposed to be doing some things. But I always say this because I've known people, you guys, who've been on welfare for 25 years. And now you say, how, I told how, you, how stop that talking about my people. I, I ain't talking about your people now. I, I, I told you that in confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying, so some people say, well, that's ridiculous. How can it be on welfare for 25 years? Keep well, having you babies. Know. Keep having babies. Right, whether it's housing, food stamps, whatever the case is. And hey, so I'll give you a free house if you get rid of your man in the house. And he, oh, oh, wait, wait, you're having problems with your mom. Your mom is beating you and stuff. And just get pregnant. We'll give you a voucher. You can get your own home. But let me ask you this. How long does it take to get a degree on average? A two-year degree. Yeah. Uh, you can do that in, eight, in eight, 18 months. Okay, and if you really, like, if you're a stay-at-home mm -hmm. mom or whatever, they... People We're talking about no break, summer all the way through. Right, okay, months. but let's think about the things that, that they used to. I don't know. The things that people on welfare get. Mm. They get housing, they get um, food, they get medical mm. coverage, and they have incentives. If you go to school, we'll pay for your daycare. That's even what I don't if you understand. Go to work, um, well, even um, you don't have to pay for books because you have the bond mm -hmm. waiver and then you get tuition. Right. And all this shit is free, but yet. So to me, I don't blame the recipients. I blame the system, system. but we know the system, to Tay's point, is there by design. We don't want people to um, be upwardly mobile. Right, right. Uh, Tay says, like, her aunt, I'm sorry to hear that, died on welfare. She was on the welfare for decades. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, in our community, a lot of people are in that same position as right. your aunt. And it's just, it's just one of those things. But we're, it's we're, a way we're of life. Up. But that's what I'm saying, the generation of fail. We are waking up because since they skipped over our generation in leadership and everything else, and it was the funniest thing, uh, long, uh, a quick story. Me and this person, Generation Fail, got in this big argument. And he was saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. He goes, these, these millionaires, they don't understand what socialism is, whatever it is. And I said, I looked at him and I said, well, how would they? I said, if I'm the, the parent and I tell this kid no, what, he, what, what is he going to do? He's running to grandma and grandpa who say yes. They don't know what it is not to have a no. They're going to get whatever they, they think everything's entitled because you guys are bailing them out. And I said, since you skipped over our generation in leadership, now the millennials are coming into their own, though you got your AOCs and people that are coming in there, they're like, why not? Why not have this? And now, you know, it's like, it's like our NAACP. Why is the NAACP and the Urban League and all these organ the black organizations are so ineffective? Because you did not bring in the younger next generation to take over leadership. Right. Well, I mean, to our point earlier, I mean, a lot of these uh, people are just dying in the seats. From my cold, yeah. dead hands. Yeah, you know, I'm good, young junior flip. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know. You sit back. Right. You know, I, it's like, but yeah, I mean, I don't care what it is. Do you think Malcolm X would still be in leadership if he was alive today? Do you think some of the Black Panthers would still be like, yes, I'm still running it? Um. Well, I think it was their aim. Not think, but I know it was their aim to teach mm -hmm. people and to raise future leaders, as it was with Marcus Garvey. That was his goal. He would always say, up you mighty nation, accomplish what you will. Now, you don't tell people that if you're not trying to show them how. I mean, you see the same thing in South Africa. They're having the same issue. Yeah, right now, you know, with absolutely. the ANC and the EFF. The EFF was like, you know what, y'all been doing this for 30, 30 years, years wrong, and, and we're, we're still, still here. We don't want to be like America, mm -hmm. where it's been 60 plus years and the same things have been done and, only and said. a few of you guys are enriching yourselves. Right. The leadership keeps enriching itself. Right. So, so that's what I have, you guys. Andrew Yang, you might want to check Yang. him out. Um, and uh, one thing I do like about Andrew is, like we said, too, I'm no shade to your girl, Tulsi. Sure, sure. I, I got to do my research on her. Mm -hmm. But he's not getting up there saying, well, let me look into it. Right. Right. Or what do they call it? Uh, uh, word fruit? Salad. Right, word salad. He, word salad. And, and he's a, um, he call he always uh, refers to himself as a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. um, he does I'm the numbers economists that. and all this other stuff. And so he says he looks at numbers in relation to where we've been, where we're going, or where you know all that kind of stuff. So he says I have to me it has to make sense numerically, and we know mm -hmm. that numbers don't lie. Right, universally uh, numbers are the only pure form of an answer. Right, you unless you don't know how to do math mm -hmm. like me, I believe anything you tell me. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tate says, we need to revamp the system so welfare isn't a crutch, but a step up. We need to give those who use the system the tools to move upward and to not remain stagnant. Number one, they don't want to do that because then we would get, we would get off the bottom. Right. Um, and she says, that's the thing. We need to force the old people to step down and let the younger folks come in and make the necessary changes to the system. But see, they've waited so long to where now, I don't think there's going to be an NAACP in the next 20 years. Right. Well, I mean, just in any way, you figure too, like with the millennials, just done. They, especially the millennials, they're disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. 
and they know they're disenfranchised. And so they're like, you know what, next. I mean, half of them don't even want to work a nine to five, which mm -hmm. I don't blame them. You know, me and my younger brother talk about this all the time. How much time we got? About how they millennials, um, they just work a couple of months. You know, and then go to the next thing. Oh uh, yeah, go hang out for a little bit. Like okay, let me go to work this gig for yeah, two or three I, months. Yeah, I got a bill coming up. Yeah, because it's like I don't want to do what they're doing. Die on the seat, mm -hmm. seventy years old at the county building, right. being a crotchety old yeah, person because, talking to people. Yeah, because somebody asked me, you know, if, if I was in leadership, I'd probably still be doing the same thing there. I said no, I wouldn't. It's, it's just like when I ran for office. Once I ran twice, I was forced to run the second time because of the special election. No, I just wanted, you know. Uh, Hit my points, and then I'm gone. And go be effective somewhere yes, else. somewhere else. And, and do what I got to do. Hey, you guys. Thanks for listening. This has been uh, Don't Believe the Hype, Donovan and Sadiq. Dimitri K. Check Dimitri K. out on Sundays, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. She is on Facebook Live. Working the kinks out of this system, but I like this uh, section that we have going on. Lis uh, listen and look up Tulsi Gabbard. And uh, I hope they give Andrew Yang a... a Town, for, uh, town hall. Oh, right. on he's, CNN. They, I, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna have a choice now. Yeah, because I mean, he's picking up a lot, lot of, steam, of steam. Steam. So you guys just check it out. Andrew Yang, good programs. You guys got any comments, questions? Hit us up, and we're gonna uh, take a look at it and give you guys some answers. But yeah, we're absolutely. gonna check you guys again out next week. Go to YouTube, look for the video, the green screen. It'll all be behind us. Everything will be good to go. We'll see you guys again next week. Peace. Let's get a sense that you have of. Um, what you want in this country to be. The Washington Examiner, uh, in an interview with them, you said, we need to become both capitalist and socialist in different areas. Yes. Uh, what, what do you mean? You can't be both. Well, uh, so I like to quote my friend Eric Weinstein, who said, we never knew that capitalism was going to get eaten by its son, technology. And here in the 21st century, a lot of the economic rules we take for granted have stopped applying. You can build a very successful profitable company that does not employ many people and if it does employ people you don't have to treat them well you can make them all independent contractors and gig workers so the things we take for granted have broken down and we have to start solving this problem by evolving our entire system so what is it you that made you run for this I mean your young dad decides that's and you discuss this with your family what was their reaction well, you know, I was talking to my wife about this just the other day in the car, when she was like, what? <laughs> how did that conversation go? Um, but I, as you suggest, I'm a father. Uh, I've got two young children. And I'm running because I want to keep this country strong and whole for them. I, I mean, my, I'm the son of immigrants. Yeah. Uh, my family benefited tremendously from the fact that I was lucky enough to be born here. And I want to feel the exact same way about my sons. So were you inspired by Donald Trump getting elected and that that changed the dynamics? Well, it certainly showed uh, what was possible. Um, but as I said at the opening, I believe that the reason why Donald Trump is our president is that there have been these fundamental economic right. changes that have displaced many manufacturing workers, and they were his retail core workers. Base. Yes. And uh -huh. the Democratic Party, for whatever reason, is not trying to address those problems. They're attacking Trump himself or the symptoms, but the disease is this pervasive economic insecurity as we make it harder and harder for Americans to find meaningful opportunities. So you need to, to get a, a seat at one of these debates. You need 1% or to poll 1%. That's 65,000 uh, individual donors. You're, you've, you're already at both, I guess, right? Yeah, and I'm going to be on the debate stage in June and July. The DNC has already reached out to my team. Is that right? So you're yeah, already there. Yeah, they were so, um, you know, so they're, they're very, very... Uh, open this time where they, they want everyone to know they're not going to put their you, this And account. I've done a few of these debates myself for, for both networks and I'm there's the so-called kids table if you're not at with a major league. The guys, JV I remember <laughs> in the, the Republicans. Is, is it tough to break through that because the structure is such that it's very tough. The DNC Neil I'm happy to say they've actually said they're going to avoid the entire varsity JV dynamic. Put you all up there together? What they're doing is they're splitting it into two nights. Oh okay. And then they're randomly selecting who goes where. So as long as oh, you make the threshold, then you're treated on an equal footing. And because they're trying to, to make it totally fair uh, for each candidate. Joe Biden is sort of like the elephant in the room. Do you think he is for the Democratic Party? Well, I look at the same polls you do, and certainly there are a lot of people that are very enthusiastic about Joe. And I've had this the, the attitude towards Joe and everyone else, which is the more candidates that run, um, first, the better it is for a candidate like me, because in a fragmented field, <laughs> you know, you can do better Stand with like, out, a right. smaller uh, percentage. But I'm also running to try and advance meaningful solutions and improve the lives of 
uh, working Americans around the country. And to me, if, if other Democrats are adopting my platform, uh, that would be a tremendous win. All of you right now have expensive platforms, a lot of spending in there, Medicare for all, as you said, it, it checks for all. Uh, and a lot of people will scrutinize how you pay for it. Um, and you talk about a value-added tax. But in the end, tell me how you're different than your other big spending colleagues. Well, I've been a CEO and business person. I met payroll many, many times. Uh, I believe that small businesses are the backbone of this economy. But we have to face facts where a generation or two ago, maybe someone would have started a hardware store in their main street. But now with Amazon sucking up $20 billion of commerce every year, 30% of Main Street stores are closing in the next four years. 30% of malls are closing in the next four years. And being a retail worker is the most common job in the economy. So we have to start facing facts. And the entire socialism, capitalism dichotomy, again, is out of date and is breaking down. We have to try and take the best of both worlds and build an economy that centers around how people are doing. Take the markets and, and have them allocate resources in ways that would actually help families in Main Street America. You, you speak a Main Street theme, but you're also educated at Brown. You went to Columbia Law. You're smart as a lick. Uh, but some will just go back and say, you know, the guy's just an elitist. Well, you know, uh, I just spent time with a trucker in Altoona, Iowa, and uh, I rode around in his truck um, to, to see what his day-to-day -day life was. Uh, and I wrote a book, uh, The War on Normal People, that breaks down what's going on in main streets around the country. I spent six years working in uh, Birmingham and Detroit and Cleveland. And so showing up in these communities, uh, I just wanted to help. Uh, and I've developed a real passion for helping the little guy or gal. Um, I grew up uh, the, only not, like, the only Asian kid, like a skinny Asian kid who, who'd skipped a grade. <laughs> and so I always felt like I had a thing for the underdog. Um, you know, I'm still a Mets fan to this day, as an example. Well, that's your problem. I'm yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it, it has been a problem. Um, but who's the underdog uh, now in America? It's, it's the mainstream American worker who's getting shoved to the side, and we're just not confronting it honestly. We'll watch you very closely. Andrew Yang, very good having you. Democratic presidential candidate. He took a look around what was going on in the country. He said, you know what? I'm going to do that. It's not an easy process.